And still to come tonight on Eyewitness News, we begin our special series on females and firearms. Brad Couples will take an in-depth look at why so many women are choosing to carry guns and why you don't even realize it. Well, next, is the lady carrying a gun? You know, more and more women are these days. Tonight, my Witness News reporter Brad Couples begins a four-part special report, Females and Firearms. Brad, where do we begin? Well, Jerry and Virginia would begin with the reason that many women are carrying firearms these days, personal protection. Former First Lady Nancy Reagan says she kept what she called a tiny little gun in her White House bedroom nightstand. She's not unique. Many women keep guns at home, and a lot of them carry them wherever they're going. You just don't see them, and that's the idea. Don't move, I'll kill you, I swear it. I'm not moving, I'm not moving. Who are you? What the hell are you doing here? Shh, shh, please. Don't shush me, you idiot, I live here. I I'm not gonna hurt you, I swear. Of course not, I've got the gun. True. This is what some women envision when they decide to buy a gun for protection. But according to a Rochester author who's writing a book on gun safety for women, it could be a mistake. The worst thing that a, a woman can do is to go out and purchase a gun and bring it home and put it in her dresser drawer and think, well, now I'm safe because I have this gun here. Instead of tucking it away in a nightstand, just in case, they should learn to use it safely and practice regularly. Deciding to own a gun means accepting responsibility. I think if you decide to, to purchase a gun and go through the process of getting your permit, uh, thing, things change in your life. You have decisions in your life that you didn't have before. Women who are licensed to carry guns usually don't want you to know. In fact, the law requires the gun to be concealed. This woman agreed to talk with us only if her identity was concealed. We've also electronically altered her voice. We met with her at a West Side shopping center. As I approach the bank, I generally look around to see who's around, particularly if I'm going to be using an ATM. And I make sure there aren't too many people standing around. If there are people standing idly about an ATM, I won't go and use it. I'll wait until they move. I think it's basically unconscious. I don't really watch other people's reactions to me as a person. I more or less watch where they are in proximity to me. Strolling through a supermarket aisle, you might notice the bulge under her jacket. It's a 45 semi-automatic. Well, I started carrying a 22 revolver. But since I've been involved in shooting for quite some time, and I sport shoot as well as recreational shoot, the firearm that I use most often is a 45. Mentally, are you ready to defend yourself? Yes, I am. There's no doubt in my mind, yes, I am. I would try at all costs to avoid a confrontation. I'm no hero. If, it's a, if I have a chance of avoiding a confrontation, I will. The women who carry guns stress safety. Knowing how to properly use a gun, what its capabilities and limitations are, are keys to having an effective means of personal defense. And Jerry and Virginia, tonight at 11, we'll meet a woman involved with a different aspect of firearms, the competitive world of skeet shooting. Very interesting. Thank you, Brad. Visit nearly any gun club these days, and you're likely to find at least one woman shooter. In part two of his special report, Females and Firearms, Eyewitness News reporter Brad Couples takes us to a local gun club, once a stronghold of male domination, which is gradually becoming co-ed as more women become interested in shooting sports. At least twice a week, Cindy Speciali picks up a 12-gauge shotgun and heads out to the Victor Rodden Gun Club skeet fields. Her father got her interested in guns as a youngster, but it wasn't until a few years ago that she became involved in competitive shooting. I got to the point in my life where I said, now what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do skeet shooting. So I came out here and met everybody and joined and went out in the field and ran three for a long time. Out of? 25. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I can run 25 now. Although Ooh. more women are getting involved in shooting sports these days, Cindy often finds herself the only Ooh. woman in a particular competition. It doesn't bother me. I've been around guys all my life. Uh, I, my father had two girls. I think he wanted boys, so it doesn't bother me at all. One surprising thing she's found herself dealing with is the attitude of other women, non-shooters, when they find out she's involved in firearms activities. Ooh. They always have questions. Why do you do it? Uh, 
They don't uh, understand it at all. Do they think oh. it unladylike? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In what way? Um, just that you got to go out there in the cold and you're around all these guys and they're better than you and that kind of a thing. Dior is a pistol shooter. She's gotten the same reaction from non-shooting women. They're always surprised. Uh, I've even had some friendships change because of the shooting. Uh, they don't know what to talk to me about anymore. If it's not babies and uh, what's happening um, in the home level, uh, they don't know how to deal with the, the sportive end of it, really. We'll find out what the differences are between women competing at different proficiency levels and aspects of shooting sports in part three of Females and Firearms, tomorrow night at 6. Brad Covers, Eyewitness News. And in our special report on females and firearms, we'll look at the women who buy and use guns. You know, nearly everybody is curious about firearms, but there's a big difference between being curious and being competitive. Tonight, in part three of his special report, Females and Firearms, Eyewitness News reporter Brad Couples introduces us to more of the women who take their guns and shooting seriously. Are you ready? I spend between 18 and 20 hours a week developing my sport. Um, that takes a lot of time from your family, and it takes a lot of hours after work to do that type of training. Welcome to the world of competitive sport shooting, the handgun division. Dee wedges the time for practice and competition into her already jammed schedule as a teacher. She's a medal winner because of it and is ranked 16th nationally. There's tremendous pressure at that level. It's kind of difficult to brag. I, I don't think much about it. You hope to make the Olympic team? I hope to make the U.S. shooting team first. And if I make the U.S. shooting team, then I, along with all the others, have a chance to make a bid for a position on the Olympic shooting team. Out on the range, in a practice or competition, shooters are equals. Are there prejudices against women among the ranks of sports shooters? I have never felt that. I have never encountered it. And there have been many times that I have been the only woman on a firing line. Lori has been a competitive shooter for seven years. She finds it relaxing in spite of the intense concentration. I find it's an excellent discipline to learn shooting and safety and marksmanship, and I would encourage other women to try it. It's a good starting point. And self-professed novice shooter Keating Gore, who's writing a shooting safety handbook for women, agrees. She's enjoyed shooting for a couple of years. It's a lot of fun, and, and I like what it demands of me, it, the, the concentration, and if you're going to be a target shooter, you have to be in good physical condition, and it, uh, it's a good all-around sport. But no matter what their competitive level, each has a common desire to promote safe firearm handling. It's amazing to me that the government will require individuals to pass a written test and pass uh, a practical test to own a license to, to drive an automobile. But they don't ask people to pass that same kind of test to use a firearm. Most people are willing to give it a try. And I've had women take my college class strictly to learn to respect it. Above all, it should be a safe experience for them. Applications for handgun licenses have risen steadily in Monroe County. Many of them are filed by women. Tomorrow, who wants a gun? What have they got to do to get one? And how some gun manufacturers are going all out to get a shot at the women's firearms dollar. Brad Couples, Eyewitness News. Just ahead, the women that are buying more and more guns. Brad Couples takes us inside at the increasing sales of guns to women in his special report, Females and Firearms. Advertisers are going all out to get a shot at firearm sales to women. Tonight, Eyewitness News reporter Brad Couples takes a look at that new development as well as who wants guns, what's needed to get them legally, in the concluding part of his special report, Females and Firearms. Happiness is a warm gun. Gun companies like Smith & Wesson are equating happiness with personal security, quoting Gallup poll figures that say 15 million women are now owning or considering buying guns. 
Smith & Wesson even created a whole new line of guns called Lady Smith. This is a, a relatively new concept in the uh, firearms industry. Uh, women have participated in the shooting sports for a number of years, and uh, this is a part of the, the market that's been somewhat overlooked. Rosewood handles made for a smaller hand, packaged attractively. Well, the advertisements that I have seen seem to focus a lot on the, uh, the appearance of the gun and the decoration and not as much on, on the use. None of those work for me. She's working on a book that will teach firearm safety to women. It will cover the basics of uh, maintaining a weapon, storing a weapon in your home. It will cover some of the issues uh, that a person needs to be concerned with if they decide to carry a weapon on their person. Rochester police statistics show violent crime increasing over the last five years. During those same five years, the number of people applying for handgun licenses increased steadily. Women account for about 15% of those applications. You don't need a license to own a rifle or a shotgun, but if you do want to own a pistol or perhaps even carry one, you need a permit. And this, the county clerk's office, is the first stop in the application process. It takes about six months. Um, the process also needs to be um, sent to the police department and the sheriff's department, and they do an investigation there also. You'll need pictures, references, and fingerprints. When it comes back to our office, we send it on to a Monroe County judge for approval or disapproval. One thing you'll have to put on the application, your reason for wanting a permit, perhaps sports shooting or personal protection. Because I can, because it's, uh, it's America and you can get one right now. Pretty soon you're not going to be able to, though. Here's where your friends can help, but be prepared for a few raised eyebrows. Matter of fact, my friends were pretty shocked because I had called up several people that I knew I would be using, needing to use for references, and uh, they were like, what, what do you want to do this for? You must be crazy. But that's, you know, that's just something I want to do. And once you've completed the process and gotten into firearms, you'll find yourself wanting to improve the look and feel of your guns. That's available, too. Basically contouring it for the shooter. Yes. When you buy a suit uh, off the rack, you want to have it tailor-made. Brad Couples, Eyewitness News. Interesting series yes. indeed.